Hey, this is Handyman Dan with You Can Build This. In this video, we're gonna be going over the step-by-step -step process on how we built our custom wood arbor for our garden. Normally, a company could come out and build this for you for between $2,500 and $4,500. Today, we're gonna to show you how you can build it for around $800. Now, here's your disclaimer to just be safe out there. DIY projects are so fun when you are safe. Make sure you use your tools appropriately and use caution. One day as I was looking at gardening ideas and inspiration, I came upon this picture of a wisteria plant growing on top of a pergola attached to a house. And in that picture, the people looked so happy. I'm a little sorry to say that I fell for it. And at that moment, I really wanted to get my own wisteria plants. So, uh... How does the dealio sound to you? I want that. So here's the backstory. I really wanted these wisteria plants, so my wife decided to gift them to me back in Father's Day of 2019. We planted them and they were doing okay. Then something bad happened. We got a new dog. And at the time she was teething. One day in the summer, she got into our garden. This was when we weren't at home. We came back, I looked in the garden, and I saw that my wisteria plants were nubs. It's gone, man. Gone. They went from 12 inch tall bushes to little nubs. To say that I was ticked off was an understatement. I think we've seriously underestimated the beast. And it was the end of the growing season. I thought, okay, well, there's no sense in replacing them now. We'll just wait until spring. Looking back, I'm so glad that I waited until spring because they ended up growing back with a vengeance. This is a picture of our wisteria back in 2020. Oh, look how cute it is. Here in this picture, you can see that they were trying to grow already on our old metal garden fence. So we put tomato cages around them so that they would at least train themselves going up instead of out. And no kidding, within a month or two, the wisteria vines had already grown five feet long and I was like, honey, we better go and uh, build this arbor. Looking up everything I could about arbor designs, it just so happened to be that my neighbor had purchased one off of a website and it was a, a white vinyl one. And so I asked her once she had put it up how she liked it. And she said, well, it's not quite tall enough and it's a little wobbly. Once she said that, I was like, okay, I've got to build my own because with the amount of weight that the wisteria was gonna place on it and the amount of wind that we get at our house, I really needed to make sure that this was a solid structure. In my searching online, I found some designs that I kinda liked, but I wasn't really too keen on like their height or the width. A few things were kind of at the forefront of my mind. It had to be strong enough to be able to support the wisteria. I wanted it to be kind of a focal point of the garden, tall, I didn't quite know how tall the blossoms for the wisteria were gonna be, but I figured, based on the pictures I saw, the blossoms were gonna be maybe eight to 12 inches long. If I make it seven feet tall, it's probably gonna be too short for some people. Based on the vines hanging down and, the, and when you walk underneath it, I didn't want it to be bumping anybody's head. I continued my search online and I found one design that I liked. The proportions I ended up going with were nine feet tall, six feet wide, and between two and three feet deep. Those ratios work pretty well together. And if you know me, you'd know that I love working with wood, but one of the concerns I had was, is it gonna last? Am I gonna have to stain this thing every year? And then I found this one product, it stated that it lasted for a few years, and I was like, okay, it is game time, let's do this. So I started working on the design of it using Google SketchUp, I'd already kind of laid out everything in my garden except for this arbor because again, I wasn't planning on building this arbor for at least another year until we could save up some more money for it. Something that I've struggled with for a while is just the amount of excitement I get when I'm doing projects like this. And that optimism usually gets me in trouble because I seem to think that I can finish a project faster than I really can. Go ahead and put that order in now, please and thank you. Just ask my wife and she will tell you how many times I have failed at meeting home project deadlines. It's pretty shocking. For the intent of this video, I did design the arbor all the way through before I built it. I'm gonna show clips of the design and then the build, and then the design and then the build, and then the design and the build, rather than going through the entire design and then the entire build. This way you can kind of see how each piece fits together. Let's go over the components that make up an arbor. You've got the concrete footings, 
You've got the posts that act as the main structure. You've got these wide rafters that span the width of the arbor. You've got short rafters that span across the wide rafters. A lot of arbors have trellises attached to the sides and that's what's gonna help anything that's climbing on top of your arbor attach to it. And depending on the size of your arbor, you could have what are called corbels. Corbels are pieces that go in the corner between the post and the rafter and it adds stability for the rafter to keep it from racking in the wind and moving left to right. Based on my overall dimensions of the arbor, with it being nine foot tall, six foot wide, and two to three feet deep, I felt like the four by four post was gonna be pretty sufficient. Going with a, a thicker one, six by six, it just didn't really fit the build. So I went with redwood as the material. The posts and the corbels are at a four by four redwood and then the rafters are out of two by six redwood. Redwood is really good for outdoor applications, especially when you stain it and weatherproof it. And it has a really nice color, so when you add the stain, it'll really pop. And for the trellis sides, I went with cedar because that's a really good wood for outdoor applications. For my concrete footings, I knew that this was gonna have to support a lot of weight. So I went three feet down, and I went with a 10 inch cylinder. Make sure and check your local restrictions as far as what's required in your area. One of my main concerns about my arbor was that it's tall, it's gonna have a lot of weight on it, and we live in a really windy area, so it was gonna be pushed around a little bit by the wind. So I wanted to find some four x four concrete post anchors that were gonna be beefy enough to give my arbor some rigidity against the wind and the weight load. I found these 4x4 post anchors, which seemed really beefy. I liked how it kept the wood an inch above the concrete. And with the snow, my thought was when the sun hits the concrete, the concrete would warm up faster than the earth. And so it would melt the snow on the concrete first. And that would allow my posts to be protected from the snow as much as possible. Now this is engineering according to Daniel. My thought was if the post anchors are oriented in the same direction, that it wouldn't give as much support in all directions with the wind. So each opposite corner has the post anchors oriented one way, and then the opposite corners have it oriented the opposite way. Eventually, we will cut off the forms that are left on the concrete footings and probably add more gravel around it so that it looks nice and clean. Now let's talk about the wide rafters. These are the pieces that go across the width of the arbor. I went with two pairs of two because I thought the look of the two pairs really looked nice and elegant. I don't know why, because I'm not a designer, but I just felt like two pairs of two would look really good. And maybe that's because I had four pairs of two going across the top. And so just to maintain uh, continuity, I would just kept them in pairs. But without me knowing about that, having the two pairs of two actually gave me a really good support structure when I added my corbels down the road. Because now with the corbels, instead of doing a lag screw just through one of the two by sixes and the four by four, I could do a through bolt with a washer on both ends and a nut on the back end. And that way I could really cinch that up and make sure that my corbels were gonna be attached firmly for the long haul. <laughs> The purpose of the corbels is to give the arbor lateral bracing so that it keeps it from racking in the wind left to right. Now the corbels are pretty basic. I thought about making them curved and I was like, man, this is this project's taking a long time. I should just make them a four by four, maybe add a little chamfer on the back end and the top end. But in the long run, they look really great and they've held up really well over the last few years. <laughs> Now let's talk about the sides of my arbor where I needed something light and minimal for the tender vines of the wisteria to grow up. Yes, I could have taken the time and like milled lumber down to a smaller size. At this point, I had already taken a long time on the project. So I decided to go check out and see if there was already a pre-assembled trellis that I could just purchase and hopefully kind of maneuver into that spot. Luckily, I found the perfect thing. I found these pre-built trellises at the store. The only problem was I had to add a couple pieces of wood to the insides of my posts that I could then attach the trellis to. So it was pretty simple. I just took one two by four, I ripped it in half, and I didn't like the sharp edges that were now on my two by twos. So I took my router and I just added a little 
profile to the sides of my 2x2s. I attached these to the insides of my posts with deck screws every 12 to 14 inches. Now the inside dimension of my posts was narrow enough that I could fasten the trellis to the sides of the runners. I couldn't have been more grateful at that time for such an awesome product. All I had to do next was just add some stain and some sealer to it and it matched beautifully to my arbor. Now on to the final aspect of the arbor, the shorter rafters that go front to back. One thing's for sure, on any construction project, everything on paper looks so much easier than it does on real life. This was probably the most difficult aspect of the project. The majority of the pieces I was able to attach with fasteners. The tricky part was attaching the narrow rafters on the very top to the wide rafters. To do this, I had to cut notches in the short rafters so that they would fit over top the wide rafters. I went through a little bit of a learning process. The first rafter that I did, I actually broke one of the spaces in between the two notches. Luckily, it was in a spot that wasn't gonna be visible, so I just ran with it. Then I decided to just lay my rafters up on top and then take a pencil and mark the spots where I was gonna cut a notch. This seemed to go much faster, saved me a lot of time, and gave me a lot more wiggle room to play around with. And I'm happy to report that I did not break any more rafters. <laughs> Here I'm gonna show you how I cut rafter numbers seven and eight because they had two different types of cuts. Number seven goes in front of my post, and so it needs four notches, one notch per wide rafter. Because I want the face of my rafter to align with the post below it. Rafter number eight, needs two big notches to span the two wide rafters and the post combined. For each notch, I want three inches of meat. So I'm gonna put my speed square upside down on the rafter and I'm gonna measure three inches down and draw a line. And to tell me where to stop, I'm gonna put a notch at the top. Now I'm gonna use my circular saw to get a straight cut going down. Now my circular saw doesn't go all the way down, just the blade's not tall enough. So I'll clean that up later with my jigsaw. Originally, I thought I had a couple different options on how I was gonna cut the narrow end of my notch. One of my thoughts was I could probably use this little cutoff tool, but it was just way too much meat with the two by six to cut through it. It got way too smoky on me. The easiest way to make this narrow cut on these notches is to use a jigsaw. You have to drill a hole on both sides of the notch and the hole needs to be wide enough for your jigsaw blade to fit in it. You can start in one hole and go from right to left and then you clean up the corners after your piece is removed. One of the difficulties about using a jigsaw is because their blade is so nimble and thin it tends to flex a lot, especially when you're cutting through thick pieces of material like I was. So on my first face, I would cut the corners out cleanly and then I'd have to flip the rafter over and re-measure it to the three inches of meat and clean out those corners again. To make these quarter circle cutouts on the ends of my rafters, I actually used my grandpa's old compass and it was super efficient because I was able to measure it once, set the compass, and know that my cuts were gonna be consistent across all the rafters. All I had to do was put one tip on the very corner of my piece, and then I used the other tip to scratch the line on my rafters. I'll give it a quick sand. Now those frayed edges off. The focus of this arbor is not to showcase 100% amazing craftsmanship. It is to showcase this beautiful wisteria that is killing it right now. Wish I could say the same for my grass. Now on to my favorite part of woodworking, the staining. This is the part where everything becomes so beautiful. I'm using this product by Valspar. It's a one coat exterior stain and sealant semi-transparent. It's got a six year guarantee on decks, but eight years on fences and siding. I'm hoping for that eight year mark. Rain ready in four hours. And I'm going with a redwood natural tone. Oh yeah. I started out with a roller that had a heavier nap, but it didn't hold up when I was staining these pieces of wood. So I ended up using a foam roller instead, and that seemed to hold up really well. As I was staining my pieces, the foam roller did cause some bubbles 
initially, but those bubbles went away. And check out this transformation. That red tone in the stain really made these pieces of wood pop. One thing I hate doing is washing out my rollers after I've stained or painted something, especially if I know that I'm gonna be doing it again in a couple hours or next day or so. I take a garbage bag and I wrap my roller inside of it really tight so that no air can get into it. And no kidding, my roller will last for days, if not a week or two, without getting dry. Now to attach the narrow rafters with my wide rafters, I'm gonna use deck screws, but they aren't long enough to go through the three inches of meat of my narrow rafter and still make it into my wide rafter. So I'm going to use a wider drill bit, which is wider than the head of my deck screw. And I'm gonna drill roughly an inch and a half down so that I know my deck screw will have sufficient bite into the rafter below it. I'm using tape on my drill bit to indicate how far down to go so that I don't drill too deep. Now I can take a narrower drill bit and drill the rest of the way through my narrow rafter. Make sure to size your drill bit appropriately by putting it in front of your screw. If the drill bit covers up everything but the teeth of your screw, then you know you've got the right size drill bit. Because I'm climbing up on a ladder, I wanna put these in, and not have to worry about putting them in my pocket and putting them in later. So I'm just gonna sink them in a little bit. That way I have less to carry and fiddle with on top of the ladder. And I know, I know, I look kind of silly with all this get up, but my wife is pretty concerned about me getting skin cancer. And I hate wearing sunscreen. It's like it's frozen or something. It's all gonna be better. I promise. This one, and we wanted to line it up flush with this post here, flush it up here. On rafter number eight, I came across a stinking mistake that I made and I didn't cut the notch wide enough. So even though I marked it with a pencil beforehand, I still had to make my notch wider. This is what made installing the top rafters a little bit more difficult because even though I marked them with a pencil, I still had to make some tweaks here and there and going up and down the ladder really got tiring. These are set and the two ends are set. So I space the four in the center evenly. So now it's time to set them in place. Now let's review the costs on how I came up with my value of $800 to build this yourself. I needed about four bags of concrete per post times four posts that ended up being about 130 bucks. Concrete forms, I needed one per post. That was about $65. My four by four post anchors were about $105. My redwood posts were about $175. My wide rafters were two by six by eight and their total was $65. My short rafters were cut up out of two boards that were each two by six by 12, and those were $75. A gallon of that stain was $50, and I'm sure there were some parts that I'm not remembering, so I just threw in an extra $100 of miscellaneous parts. Saw blades, screws, and there's probably something else I'm forgetting, so just to be conservative, I rounded up to $800. Overall, you can see that this is a lot of bang for your buck if you build this yourself. It has been so much fun to go out there once a week or so and see how fast this wisteria grows. It has been such a cool thing to watch. And as you can see, two years later, our wisteria plants have grown and flourished. Their blossoms are so beautiful in the springtime. One thing is for sure though, Wisteria blooms are not good cut flowers. I wouldn't recommend trying to put them in a vase in your house because after one day, they really stink. I am really pleased to report that even after two years, the stain doesn't look like it has faded at all. I haven't had to touch it up and it has held up really well. Looking back, I'm not really sure that I would change anything on how I built this. I had a big learning curve on the top rafters like I had mentioned before, but once I figured that out, it went together pretty smoothly. If you have any suggestions on how you think I could have built something better, let me know in the comments below. 
I guess the most time consuming part was having to climb up and down the ladder. That got pretty tiring. And the narrower rafters took quite a bit just to cut those. And the total number of pieces wasn't really that bad. Thanks so much for watching You Can Build This. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you the confidence needed to tackle this project or something similar on your own. If you give this project a try or you've built something like it, let me know in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you're notified when we post more gardening videos like this arbor. In the future, we're gonna have another video for our trellis. We're gonna have a video for our garden extension. We'll have another video where we show our retaining wall and other do-it-yourself construction builds. We'll see you on the next one.